Hey everyone, my NSX is almost 22 years old and although it only has 16,000 miles, the calipers are pretty beat up. In this video, I'll show you what I did to get them looking brand spanking new again. Fun fact is that North American NSX calipers only came in two different colors, a matte dark gray as you can see here for the pop-up cars and a glossy gold for the fixed headlight cars. When I was deciding how to restore my calipers, I had two choices, one powder coat or two paint. Typically, powder coating would be the best option because they'll last much longer than traditional paint and are far less likely to chip. The downsides to powder coating is that it costs much more and you have to remove and completely disassemble your calipers. At this point, you might as well rebuild the calipers while everything is taken apart. Also, when you reinstall, you have to bleed your brakes. Painting requires much less work and only costs me around 60 bucks or so for the G2 caliper paint kit. You can even find cheaper cans of paint from AutoZone as well. So obviously a huge benefit of painting is that you don't have to remove the calipers entirely from the car, thus not having to re-bleed the brakes on reassembly. Before I get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Matt Fan. He recommended some great tools for me to get the job done easier and taught me all of the differences between an impact driver and an impact wrench. I honestly had no idea what the differences were. With his recommendation, I purchased a Milwaukee impact wrench, a much more powerful battery, and these special Harbor Freight impact sockets made specifically for wheels. They have a plastic outer shell to prevent scratching. The impact wrench was great in untorquing the lug nuts, but when reinstalling, I only used it to drive the lug nuts on and used a torque wrench to do the final tightening. I've been changing wheels for quite a while and I can't believe how much time and energy I've wasted over the years. It literally takes about 30 seconds or so for me to remove each wheel now. So let's start by removing the calipers. The front calipers are extremely easy to remove. You just have to remove two 14mm bolts on the calipers and wiggle them off. You can leave the bracket in place. Be sure to keep the caliper propped up so it's not hanging by the brake line. And as you can probably guess, now is a good time to change your brake pads as well. My brake pads were still in great shape so I didn't have to change them at this time. The rear calipers are a little bit trickier. First you have to remove the plastic caliper shield using two 10mm bolts. Next, you want to release your e-brake and remove the parking lock brake pin using needle nose pliers. This allows you to move the parking brake out of the way. After that, remove the brake hose bracket that's held on by the two 12mm bolts. Although it's not required, I found that it was much easier to move the caliper around with this removed. And finally, you want to remove the two 14mm caliper mounting bolts. Now you can wiggle the caliper off the bracket. Be sure to have something to prop it up against and not let it dangle by the brake line. Also, be sure to remove the brake pads and the metal shims that hold the pads in place. After I got everything disassembled, I sprayed the calipers down heavily with brake cleaner to get as much crap off as I could. Then I used a wire brush and brushed lightly to remove as much surface rust and oxidation as I could as well. Now this was the interesting part. I noticed that after hitting the calipers with a wire brush, the calipers actually looked really good and the OEM paint looked amazing underneath. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes or so for each caliper. I think I could have gotten it done faster, but I actually took my time in getting all of the cracks and crevices clean, as well as hitting the back of the caliper too. I know it's not going to be visible, but you might as well clean it up while you're here. When reassembling, if you change your brake pads, you have to push the pistons back in. The fronts are pretty easy to do with the spring compressors, but the rears require a special tool that you can use to push the piston in by rotating it. You can easily find this at AutoZone. Also, be sure to re-torque everything back to spec and do not forget to re-engage your parking brake. All in all, this entire project took me about 8 hours or so, which included a lunch break and multiple trips to AutoZone. I also spent a lot of time cleaning my wheel well and replaced all of my broken fender liner push pins and I also cleaned up various suspension components.
I'm really happy with how all of this turned out, especially the fact that I didn't have to paint anything and I kept everything original. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed watching it as I enjoyed making it. See you next time.